Hello, I'm Ron. Welcome back to another episode of Classic Model Trains. Let's go into my train cabin here and get started on this week's episode. This here is the two monsters that sometimes you hear in the background making noises while I'm trying to film. Making sure that the property is staying nice and safe. Today's episode, I'm going to be refurbishing an Athern HO scale GP9 that I believe came from the early 60s. The EMD GP9 is a four axle locomotive that was manufactured between 1954 and 1959 by General Motors Electromotive Division. The GP9 succeeded the GP7 as the second model in Electromotive Division's general purpose line, incorporating a new 16 cylinder diesel engine which generated 1,750 horsepower. There was 4,092 GP9s produced during their lifespan. This particular model came from a donation center auction site, and although the pictures from the auction site website made it look really good, the packaging practices that they use left a lot to be desired. Let's see if they managed to pull it off on this one. That does not look like they packed the cars individually. It's like a motorcycle helmet bag. They're literally in there, completely, completely loose. Literally just stacked on top of each other. Christ sakes. That is unbelievable. What's this? Something stuck right there. Broken cab. Out of the five locomotives that showed up in that purchase, it was time for this GP9 to get some loving care. We're gonna begin the process of dismantling this GP9. It's an Athern, so of course the bodies just snap on. Some guys can do this with their fingernails, but I always chew my fingernails off, so I'm never able to spread the shell out enough. But you just pop it open a little bit and the shell will come right off. And here is our chassis. The reason I know this is an older uh, Athern from the 60s is because they went from the high F drive to this motor right here that's got the two outputs on it because it does not have flywheels. So they didn't put flywheels on. From some of the things I've read, they haven't put them on until 73. And, I, and then I also read that they started off with steel flywheels and then they went to the brass ones. This top clip right here is the power clip that supplies one of the brushes. This brush up here with the electricity, just spread it open a little bit and it comes off. Now we wanna get the trucks out. This part right here is the keeper that's holding it in. Come up from the truck, I can catch it from the very bottom and just roll that off. You see how that just came off? And then the, the truck, see this sits in here, clips on the top. So you open up, that, you open up this clip by sticking the screwdriver up under here, pry these up and then this will come off. Bearing, bearing holders, this is the helical gear right through here. Here is a thrust washer right there. There's a clip back here, this clip that goes around the bottom of the truck. Pry that. This comes off. Here's our truck assembly. Pull one of these side frames off and this is how the truck is assembled right there. Bearings in the side frames keep everything in line. So this particular unit is a four wheel drive. I am going to take these trucks apart. These gears right through here have a tendency to strip out since each wheel is an electrical pickup for each side of the track. This of course is a plastic insulator. These gears will break over time. Now I'm gonna wanna paint these side frames. So I'm gonna take this all apart and I'm gonna put it in the ultrasonic cleaner so I can clean these up real pretty. These here are cast, that's how the older ones were, but they're not fully metal. Must be that Zymac, because this is magnetic right here, but this part is not magnetic at all. Just like how the frame is not magnetic where the motor is. The motors usually just pull right out because they've got these motor mounts that are down underneath here. Motor mounts can be pushed out like this. See so how they're thinner here and then they got that little thick part right there. So that's what holds them into the hole right there. These motor mounts can be replaced, although I'm not sure if you can find them for these older, I mean, this 1960s style motor mount. This bracket right here is for the headlight and it gets its power from the truck and it gets the other half of its power from this bracket right here. This metal strip right here is where the bottom of the motor would get its power. This copper strip is what provides 
power to the lower brush. This copper strip provides power to the upper brush. Take these strips off very carefully. Strip will come off. Here's the brush spring and the brush. Stretch it just a little bit. Get it off that hook right there. Lower spring, lower brush. Now this frame, this ring magnet frame, now wants to come apart. Drive line comes off. Here's the front bearing holder right there. Rear drive line comes off. There is the rotor. That is the ring permanent magnet right there. Come out of this back bearing block on the motor. Clean these guys up. I'd like to see this to be copper colored instead of this black that's on it right now. Using some odorless mineral spirits to give this thing a good cleaning. Use my little bright boy here to finish cleaning up these commutators because I want them to be just as clean as they can be. Shit. I got really lucky on that one. I found it again. Two clean brushes, clean commutators. Clean these bearings out right into here. So we will reassemble this. The ring magnet on, stator in. Get the other bearing brush block in. There's our motor being held in place. This is the bottom. One brush, one spring. Sometimes these springs can be kind of tricky to hold on to. If you stab them with a screwdriver like this, then you're not really compressing them at all. And then you won't have so many problems trying to fetch them up. I have a lot of things shoot out whenever I use these needle nose pliers. Put that guy back on. We're gonna do the same for the top. Put the brush in. There will be a wear mark on it where it was rubbing on the commutators. And one end will be completely flat. So put the flat end up where the brushes will sit on it at. We'll get that spring. Put it in there and then we will install the top brush holder. This motor holder, see these little grooves right here? These little pins right there? They go on like this. And then it'd be pushed into the locomotive, locomotive frame. This part here is nice and clean. This is where it gets its current at from the electricity being picked up off of the frame. Comes through the trucks. It's going to pick up right in this area here. It'll get some of its current. So you want to make sure that these areas are nice and clean. And then this area to be nice and clean. This locomotive is in really good shape. Obviously it wasn't, it wasn't used very much. Or if it was, it was treated very, very kindly you know, before the shipping packing incident took place. Oh, just sat down and found this thrust washer right here. So now I guess I get to take it all apart and do it again. I'm going to guess that it came off of this front, came off of this front holder right here. I've never tried this before, but I'm going to try it now. I got to get these rubber mounts inside the bottom of this frame. If I can push it in, I'm going to use some slickum here. I've just got some soapy water with a lot of soap in it and I'm going to lube these things up so that they slide and then of course everything will evaporate and then it won't be there anymore. So they're, they're, not, they're not in yet and now they are. So I would have to say that that's a pretty good idea. Motor mounts are in with the motor. I noticed that it sits kind of crooked in there. The, this end of the, of the motor's lower than this end but it was like that before i got started everything is seated in there like it's supposed to that's how you clean the motor up and clean up all the contact areas on one of these older atherin blue boxes these wheels they come out like this out of this plastic act drive axle here and this these are what have a tendency to break so when you go to clean the wheels of course make sure that you're very careful so that you don't end up breaking this plastic thing and then of course, when you're done, you're gonna have to pull out your NMRA gauge and re-gauge the wheels since there's a little bit of adjustment on these things. Right here where it says wheels, and then the two flanges on the wheels are supposed to line up into that gauge. Just perfect. I've got the metal truck sides in a little baggie, 50-50 mix of water and simple green. And I'm going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner so I can get all the scub off of them so I can paint them. This is after three minutes. These ones are in the ultrasonic cleaner. These ones have not been cleaned yet, so this can kind of show you just how quickly the ultrasonic cleaner can whip everything into shape. I used a stainless steel brush just to kind of brush them off to make sure I had everything kind of removed from them. Got some tape where I don't want the paint to be. We're giving them a little, 
a little spray paint and some gray. We can do the reassembly process. Well, my trucks have come out of paint, so they look like this now. It's a nice primer gray colored. I took apart all the wheels off of these uh, gear, gear uh, blocks that are in the center of them. And the reason I did this is because some of them come off really quite easy. They, they go on with some friction fit. I didn't like the fact that some of them weren't frictioning very well. And I thought that it could cause some potential for it to slip. What I'm going to do is use a little bit of CA goo glue inside here, which will hold on to it some. Now it's not like an epoxy or anything like that, but it's going to be one more better than what I don't have already, which is brand new gear blocks right here. I'm gonna put these shafts in for the idler gears. Just like so. We're getting ready to assemble this truck. So we'll give them just a, a little oil on these bearing blocks. A little oil over here. Put the truck down into it and push it together. This is gonna go on the back side here like this. And there is one truck assembly put together. Put these trucks on, fish them up underneath here. You get this pin right here to line up with this little hole right here in this truck. And of course the front one, you get to mess around with this headlight thing. You get that locked in. You get this little fella right here. Put this in with the gear at the front. Get this little cover in there. And it's gonna snap back on where we took it off at. So it's already in, all the way in place, then it holds the truck on. We will play the same game on the back side. Push these into place. Now that the trucks are back on, let's take it over to the track and see how it works. I've repaired the damage that happened during poor packing on this locomotive where this Part of the cab was broken right here and it also broken off this whole cab out of the body. So I've glued it all together and then the way they'd packed it, of course the body itself has got a lot of paint marks on it and chips and stuff like that which is really unfortunate. It's really hard to try to match that color. But uh, now I'm going to build some new hand railings for it. I'm using these A-line hand railings and I've got, these ones here are the 9 16 stanchions. Just little, little fellers. And of course the body has got holes in it for the stanchions. So all I gotta do is just get these stanchions in the hole, get them to stand up and then take some wire and bend in new hand railings off of looking at a picture on the YouTube. I am going to put this into a time-lapse mode and start building these hand railings. hours this is what it looks like now hand farming all the rails on it now of course they're not jig straight and per absolutely perfectly symmetrical and stuff like that but I got to say that you know unless you spend a bunch of time just staring at it and stuff like that and if you want to find something wrong you're gonna now I got to pull them all off and prep them for paint While I was waiting for the hand railings uh, to be painted in between drying, I decided I was going to touch up the locomotive a bit because it had a lot of uh, road rash on it and a lot of problems with the uh, way it was shipped to me. Walmart's got this apple barrel paint and I used this uh, 2760E King's Gold, which matched really well. I had to paint, you know, up along this edge here, along through here, up in the front. Over here, there was quite a bit of just touch-up painting that took place. And then up here on the top, there was a lot of gray that was rubbed off. And this 4470E elephant gray 
seem to do a really, really good job of matching it all up. So cleaned all that up, and then I went ahead and took some of this Tester's Dull Coat Spray Lacquer so I could seal everything. Now, some guys like to weatherize their equipment. I don't like weathered equipment. I like it to look new. Um, I guess it's just a personal a personal choice. Everybody's railroad, do the way they want. I like to keep my stuff looking kind of shiny. So let's get these railings put on. So this is what it looks like with the painted railings all built, custom built, and installed on the locomotive. On the inside of the shell, I added an extra three ounces of weight in here just to put a little more weight on the locomotive for a little better tractive effort. The couplers, of course, these atherns are really, really quite easy because they've just got this little metal clip right here that you can pop off. And this did have horn hooks on it and I installed a KD whisker coupler. You can see the little self-centering springs right there. This makes them super easy to swap out. Snap it down into place, and we've got our KDs installed. This original light bulb right here would be about the size of a, I suppose a little smaller than a 22 shell. That would couple, it just sit in here and be held up friction fit from this lower contact right here. And of course you can't find them bulbs at all. I guess if a guy wanted to wire in an LED or a smaller grain of wheat bulb, you'd wire one, solder one wire right here, solder another wire right here, put your light in. Well, I talked about it for so much that I figured, well, I'm just gonna go ahead and solder in a new headlight on it. This is just a little teeny tiny grain of wheat bulb that I had. And I've got the longer wires on it, so it'll sit up more towards the front of the locomotive. It'll kind of shine out that front headlight area instead of lighting up the cab. Because we can't get these bulbs anymore. Put a freshy light bulb in it. Now that all the mechanical and cosmetic repairs have been done, let's take a look at how the thing came out. It does look nice. But can it pull? I decided to make a consist with this older Athern and my newer Walther's mainline GP9 DC only. They didn't play well together because the Walther's locomotive was quite a bit slower than this older Athern. Here's an interesting fact. The new Walther's GP9 could not pull the same amount that the Athern locomotive could. Here it is spinning out on my just a little bit over 2% grade that's on my layout. It just doesn't have enough weight to pull it. Come on, you can do it! But the old Athern, she had no problems. Thanks so much for watching.